Hello, welcome again back to Walter Doodle's Art. Today I am going to be painting the final product of pan the panda bear eating um, some bamboo. And we're going to just go ahead and get started. I've got my ink set up here on this well right here. I've got my pure ink. This is a wash of water and ink. And over here I've got almost pure water. Up here you can't see it on the frame, but I've got some dirty water and then I've got some cleaner water. And that's just to wash my brushes out. And we're just going to get started right away. I'm first going to start with one of the pandas. So I go into my dirty water, make sure I get some of the water off of there. And I'm just going to start painting. Let's, we're going to start with the head, I come to the side of the head, and then I come over and I paint the muzzle. I mark where the nose is going to be, and a little bit of the jawline, and come back up on more of the muzzle. Here's the top of the head, and we give it its ears. I really don't want to touch the lines I made for the head with the ears and I want the ears fairly saturated with water. We're going to come back and put more water on the ears later on. Here's the second ear. Just bring that up and around. Okay, now I'm going to give it the side here of the face. We're going to give it it's got the mask for its eyes. This one's on the more far side. And here we got it on the nearer side. So there we are with the masks for the eyes. Pandas, they have a lot of thick neck and shoulder area. Comes down around like this and comes into the arm. And the arm's gonna be something like that. Bring that on around so that I know where my designation of the arms are. A little more water on the brush. This one comes from the rear and it's going to be somewhat pointed up towards the mouth here. Then we've got the back of the panda and the bottom end of it and we've got the rear leg that comes out and around this way. And there we go. Bring that on up and around. This one. Comes, it's not as much seen. So it comes out here like so. Fairly good foot. There's the basic size of my panda here. I'm also going to put a little baby panda down here. So we've got, let's put it right about here. We've got one ear. The second ear is going to kind of be behind the head, so it's not as much going to be seen. We got the face of the panda coming down here. We got its nose mask of the eyes, one, and then two, that comes on around, got the shoulder, it comes down into the arm, which is, he's going to be kind of trying to take his first tentative steps in the world, here's the arm, on that side the paw, like that, give him a little bit of his muzzle, like so. And there we go. Bring this on up and around a little bit more. I need to take away a little bit right here. I don't want quite so much on that area, so I'm going to take a lot of this water off. There. That'll work. That'll work. Bring this around. Alright. The rear leg we're only going to see the one leg, the back comes down and it comes in 
to the rear leg where he's trying to take steps. So there's that leg. And there we are for the baby panda. Now, we're gonna go ahead. Pandas are black and white. So I'm gonna go in to my water. And I'm gonna start applying the water. I'm gonna start with the ears. A little more water than what I had come up a little bit more. And this is where I take and I'm going to define the shape of, the, of what I've got for the water a little bit more. And what I'm going to be doing is now I'm going to be dipping into the pure ink and I'm going to touch it towards the center of these sections and work my way out and come close to the edge of where I have the water but not quite there. That allows the water to take the ink and feather it towards the edges a little bit more and so it looks a little bit more like fur. The water will do the rest, feathering that out, making it look like fur. I got a loose hair. Get rid of that. You just kind of pinch the hair and pull it off. There we go. Make it a nice little tip. Dip it in my paint, uh, ink again. Again, starting in the center, and I just work my way out. That's just for the ears. I'm not going to be quite so careful on the arms and the legs. Now, for the nose, I'm going to start outside on the top of the water area I did, and then just come slightly down into the water area. That makes the top of the nose be well-defined edge. The bottom nose feathers a little bit. I like that look. And again, I'm not going to go ahead and re-emphasize on the eyes with water. I don't want it to feather quite as much as what I do with the ears and the arms. But you just put that in there, the eyes, like so, and like so. There we go. Now, I'm going to go into some more water. Put some more water on the arms. And again, I'm just using it to kind of define the shape that I'm uh, willing to let feather with the ink. Come on up here to right about there. Right there. And bring that on down. So there is going to be the shape of my one, one arm, shape of my other arm. Define it a little bit more, a little more of a curve right there at the paw area. Bring it up towards the mouth just a little bit. There we are. Fill that in so that both of them are nice and wet. Go into my ink. And here I just put it in there. And then I let it feather. Bring it out towards the edge. And then the next one. And there we go. And I'm going to let that feather. It's going to spread a little bit, become more furry looking. Okay, now the baby panda. Oh, no, I got the legs to do, don't I? It's a good thing I never make mistakes, huh? Okay, I'm going to bring my water shape pretty much where I have it. I kind of like the shape that I've got going on. But just get it wetter. A little more water, come in and do the next leg. Dip it into the pure ink, get a good amount of pure ink on it, come in and then just spread it in like so. Go into my ink and spread it in just like so. There we go. Wash my brush out. Now I may go in later on when everything's dry and reinforce some of the lighter lines for the panda. But right now, I'm just going to let that dry as we go and work on other stuff. So I dip it into some water. Again, I go in. I reinforce the water on the ears. 
redefine those shapes a little bit. Bring that up and around. There we go. Go into my ink. Start on the inside and let it spread. Move it around so that it starts going towards all the parts of the water. Same thing with this here. There we go. And let that feather out. Get rid of some of the excess water in my brush. Dip it into the pure ink. I'm going to do the nose again. About the same way. Come up with one eye. And the second eye. There we go. Get a little bit more water. Wet my paws down. And the arms coming up. I want it to be about there. Come on around. Go into my ink. And again, just a big old wash. Just really quickly put that in. And I'm going to let that feather and spread. There we go. Wash my brush again. A little more water. And the back paw. Just like so. More ink. And then come in and again I just quickly put it in. Now I'm going to let those things dry. Next thing I'm going to be working on is the bamboo. And for that I'm going to change brushes. And I see right away I need a little more pure ink. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to put this where it can be seen in the video a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to continue with this. For some reason, I'm having trouble with my camera. I haven't figured it out. It shuts off. So I'm going to try to pay attention to that. I've got some painting here. I don't know where it's cut off. I'll find that out when I edit all this together. But anyway, I've got my bears here. I've got a little sprig of a young bamboo growing there and some older bamboo growing here with some leaves going on. Where I'm going to be next though, I'm going to put in the nodules of my bamboo that grow in between the sections. This designates, it designates two things. One, where does one section end and another begin, although you can kind of see that. But it also helps to define a little bit more what is eye level and what isn't. So this, 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 and this, I'm going to kind of consider them eye level. That means I'm going to give them a little bit different type of a nodule than what I would above or below the eye level. So what I do is I dip it into solid ink and I give it kind of an inverted S. So I come down, barely come across, and come down again. Down, across, and down. I don't worry about if it fills it in completely or not. I'm not too concerned on that. Now this one down here this one is below eye level, so I'm going to give it a cup because you lift a cup up from below eye level to your mouth. So it's a cup on the bottom of one of the nodules. These two up here are hats because they're above eye level and you put hats above your eyes. So there's a hat and there's a hat on top of those segments. Now let's go ahead and fill in more of the leaves. We're going to give the leaves a little bit more definition. Where is it thickest? Where is it thinnest? Uh, where I want it thick, I'm obviously going to group them together. I'm going to work on some dark leaves first. These ones are in front of the other leaves. And uh, and I just start filling in here and there, defining the shape of the clusters of leaves as I go along. You'll notice as I'm painting that the ink is going to start getting less and less dark and that's perfectly okay. We want that. Uh, that helps to designate the different groupings of leaves, uh, whether they are in front of others or are they behind others. Some of them I'm going to go ahead and send out to the sides. They're not quite as old as the leaves that uh, are really pointing down. Um, Maybe do a couple of these groupings way out here where 
they will be more alone than others. And we just do them where they're pointing in different directions. Some of them are straight, some of them are curved. Uh, maybe I'll come over here and I'm going to even make some that are a little bit on the newer side. So I'm going to go ahead. Those I generally am going to put on top of the leaves that are pointed down. They're growing up. They're newer leaves. I don't do too many of those on these larger bamboo stalks, but most of them that I do, I like to point down. I like the look better for one, but I also know on these bigger stalks, you generally are going to have a little more older leaf than you will on the young bamboos. So they point down more than they point up. Uh, let's start filling it in. Water that down a little bit, get it not quite so dark. ink is pretty saturated with ink and not very much water so I'm going to really lighten that up now there we go these ones will have a tendency to really fade as they dry and they just really filling in some of these areas making them thicker in their groupings not all of them are going to be three or five. I might be able to get away with just two or four, unless it's really sitting alone where you're going to see it. Uh, then I do it in groups of three or five. But when it's all combined in here, not quite so worried about it. Um, you'll notice some of the leaves that break up and it's almost fuzzy. No problem with that. It actually adds to some of the charm of this type of painting, and I don't mind that at all. Um, you'll notice up here, I have some of the leaves that go right off the edge of the page, and then I'm going to have some sections where the edge is going to be clear. That's something I like to do. It gives it more of that freedom feel, like nature has. I go around and I just choose where do I want my group thick, where do I want it thinner, and I don't try to stick in one area very much. I try to go from one area to another, somewhat at random. Okay, now I'm getting into where the leaves are grouping together a lot more, so I don't, I can get away with even numbered groupings. Don't have to do it that way, but it's not a big deal. Here and there, just put in a smidge of leaves just to fill in the areas, the blank areas. I don't want to get rid of all the white because I am going to be coming in with some color and designating that. Get a little darker. I think I want a group of leaves out here. Here I want to touch up on my um, pandas. I'm going to go into my black ink. One of the things I want to do is really define the shape of the eyes, the patches of eyes. We're going to go in with some white watercolor in just a bit and we're going to actually make the eyes themselves. We're going to surround the pupil with white watercolor, a nice thick wash of white watercolor and that will give it a really good look 
of the eyes on the panda. But the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I clean up just what I want the shape of the mask to look like. And then I want to give the panda some claws. So here we got just a few claws. These claws I want pointed more towards the mouth. And then on the on the hind feet. I'm not sure what it is about the hind feet. I always like only seeing four claws. I like five up on the top, but only four on the bottom. Of course, the baby, he has claws too. He's learning to walk. His claws are all pointed down. I'm gonna bring that out a little. One, two, there we go. Okay. Um, the mama panda, I noticed that the ears darken or lightened up a lot and I want them darker. So I'm not gonna get to the edges, but I'm gonna paint up to the edges, almost touching them, but not quite and reinforce how dark they are. I really want them dark. I also want this paw to be a little darker than what it is. So, bring that on up and let that just peter off. There we go. Okay, I like that. Now, I'm gonna wash the brush. I do want to reinforce some of the edges. Not a lot of it, but some of it. So, I'm gonna get a fairly decent a uh, mixture between water and a little darker than that. Uh, a little darker than that. I need a little more ink in that water. Uh, a little more. There we go. Now, one of the things I'm doing right now, you can't see it, but I'm wiping my brush off and really getting rid of a lot of the water. I don't want that much water. And I'm gonna come in here and just touch a few areas. I want the definition at the sides of the face, the muzzle. I want the shoulder a little bit better defined. Right here a little better defined. I want this a little better in definition. Like so. I want to give it a little more muzzle, so I'm giving it just a couple lines there to emphasize that. There we go. There. So, there we go. Now, before I get to all the greenery, I want to give um, the panda something to eat. So I'm going to make sure i got a good thing here. First thing I'm going to put in is the stalk. So we've got the stalk of Panda. He's holding, she's holding on to it. Comes off like so. And maybe it's part of this growth that she found was growing up. In fact, I'm going to give it one more growth. That's a little taller and with some greenery. Like so. And another shoot that comes off and and another shoot yeah, and there okay all right now this shoot is obviously it's got to come out here cuz it needs to be a long shoot otherwise why bother if it I really got to figure out how to control my camera. What I don't know is where I left off. It starts turning off on me. I've got to figure out why it's doing that. What I've done is I've put in a lot of leaves, some very dark, some not so dark. I've reinforced certain areas on my pandas. I will be going in with white and making little circles around a pupil on the eyes so that you can really designate where the eyes are. And I've given some light wash on some bamboo that they are eating. I've reinforced even my little thing of bamboo. I've taken a light wash of this green up the sides of the bamboo and put it in the background of some of these leaves. And it's basically where I use some of my dirty water and then I go into this blue, this blue, 
this blue and this yellow and I just pull it together and I get a fairly deep greenish gray color that I want to work with. And it doesn't matter if you have to mix some more up and it's not the same color. Really doesn't matter. You're, you're just going for a shadow type color. These are for background leaves that are going to be uh, giving it more depth. And uh, you just quickly put them in here and there. Doesn't have to follow all the leaves in front of it. I don't really get too hung up on my groups of five and three like I do with the black leaves. I just kind of stick them in place here and there, having them stick up. I just want a basic shape, a wash of green that sticks around uh, to give it some depth. Um, and there I go for that. I'm also going to go in here and I'm going to give it a few little hints, suggestions here and there of stuff that is in the background. I don't spend much time on this. I just go for it and I put a little bit of shape trying to keep it in the boundaries of what's there. Now when it comes to these leaves here, these are the ones I will spend a little more time try to make sure they're basically within the confines of what I've just put in there. They are separated from the rest of the leaves so it gives it already a, a feeling of depth that you're not going to, or a, a forwardness actually, that you're not going to have with the other leaves. It's like these pandas have pulled the stuff up front. And there is basically my drawing, except I do want some other things here. I'm going to put some leaves on the ground because these guys, they've been all over the place with the leaves, so they've stomped through it. So we're going to give them a few leaves here and there of little punches. Um, they come off you know, all over the place. So here we go. Group some together and some apart. And basically I just do them in like that and then I come in and I start just smudging here and there. That gives it almost like there's leaves and grassiness surrounding them. Okay, such here and there. Gives it a sense of the pandas are not floating in midair, but they're grounded on something. I also will use this, and I'm going to go into my gray color a little bit, and I'm going to give a little bit of shadow, just a little suggestion of shadow on this. Okay? <coughs> Last thing before I get to the white, I need to designate these leaves hanging on something. So we got to have limbs. So I take a group of leaves and I pull a limb up, little, little branches here and there, so that they're all working together. And I just make an indication of some branches that come here and there so that these things aren't just hanging out in space. Like so. Last thing I want to do is I want to give a real depth. So I'm going to really get a light wash and I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be a lighter color. I want a mountain back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly put in just an indication of some landscape that comes up and here we've got a mountain just coming off that way and then off to the distance. My shadow's coming this way so my shadow will be on this side of the mountains just like such and so gives it just a little bit of suggestion of a mountain. Gonna go in 
and give it a slight little hill, little on the darker side than the mountains were. So we have some foothills that are growing here and there. Again, it's got a shadow shape to it. Now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to go in, darkest ink, real tip of the brush. Make sure I've got a nice fine line that I'm working with. Come on. It split on me, my brush. There we go. Tip in the ink. All right. I want a bird or two. So there's one right there. And there's another one. These birds are really just floating around. There we go. Now, last bit, the very last bit. I'm going to go in, doesn't matter if it's clean or not. I'm, you know what, I do want clean. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get my white, which is, where is my white? White, 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 white. And I'm going to get pure liquid on this. Just get a little squirt of white. Just a little tiny bit. There we go. Make sure my brush is good. And a nice point on my brush. Dip it right into the tip of my white watercolor paint. Get rid of that extra hair. And I'm going to give pupils by surrounding them with a little white circle. Like so, like so. There's... There we go. So there we got our pandas. And our bamboo. So now all I need to do is sign it. Gonna be doing that with some Elian script. Now I don't go with Elian script unless I got my grid with me. And again, I may do a video of Elian script soon. I don't know. It's kind of fun. This is my grid. It's just so I know where <coughs> I need to be with all of that. I also want this brush because it really holds a good point. I go into my ink and I'm going to just name this. What should I name it? Peaceful Panda. Pandas. Pandas. Let's just name it Pandas. That's a good one. Where do I want to name that? Let's see. Uh, let's put it right here. So. My alien script, my P, looks like this. Want a little more ink. There we go. P. There we go. A. sign it with my first name again in Elian script all my ink I sign with just my first name in Elian script with other type of artwork I use something else but for ink I just use Elian script my W looks like this well it actually can look one of several ways but today I'm gonna make it look like this so my W will look like that. That's a W. My A 
my L. My T. So there is Panda and Walter. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did at all, I ask that you would hit that bell and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Like the video. It helps. And I thank you for watching. God bless you. Love you. I already said goodbye and I forgot something. I need to actually do the official signature. This is a soapstone. It has a stamp carved into it that is basically the first two characters of my last name. It basically says Spro. <laughs> and it's two characters long. This is this uh, uh, red crimson type paste. Interesting videos you can watch on how this stuff is made if you want. Um, it's wonderful stuff. I do enjoy doing things close to the traditional Chinese way and this is one of those things. I'm working on a new stamp that will actually have two characters of my name, the W and the S, both in Chinese and in Elian on the same stamp. It's a bigger stone, but I'm not done with that yet. But anyway, gotta sign it, so I dip that in there. Make sure which way is up. The one thing I told you I'm not quite traditional on is I like to do things kind of changed up. These characters are actually backwards. That's not by design, that's by mistake. When I carved the stone, I drew them on as I saw them. I forgot to make a mirror image of them. But that's okay. Once I did that and I realized what I'd done, I liked it, so I kept it. And I'm gonna put that right next to my name. I think on this side, put it down and really press it in. When you do this, if you ever get this way, have some padding underneath your paper. If it's just a hard surface without padding, sometimes that doesn't show up very well. There I am. I am finished now with this drawing. So once again, goodbye. God bless you. I love you.